He was nicknamed Slamming Sammy. His hands used to twitch rapidly at the plate, and his left foot methodically tapped the dirt beneath him before each violent swing sent a baseball screaming into the sky. Yes, at his best, Sammy Sosa was considered must-see television, but the former Cubs slugger then had a precipitous fall from grace. In this video, we will discuss the top 10 things to know of Sosa's wild, unbelievable life. Number 10. Growing up in poverty. Samuel Peralta Sosa was born on November 12, 1968 in Consuela, Dominican Republic, one of seven children. Sosa had a difficult upbringing and grew up in poverty. His father, Juan Batista Montero, drove a tractor clearing sugarcane field, but died of a cerebral hemorrhage when Sammy was just six years old. Sammy's mother had dropped out of school in her teens and worked as a maid and a cook. When Sammy turned 13, he prioritized work over school. He and his older brother Luis established a business shining shoes for middle class businessmen. One of the men he worked for bought Sammy his first bicycle and his first baseball glove. Getting a real glove was a big deal because previously Sosa used a mitt made from a milk carton. At age 14, Sammy became so good at baseball he decided to quit because he drew the attention of an informal agent and joined a traveling team with real uniforms. Sosa's quest for stardom was only beginning. Number 9. Determination to make it to the MLB At age 15, he signed with the Phillies, but it was voided because he was underaged. The following year was a parade of tryouts and rejections from other teams. However, Sammy was not about to give up on his dream. Finally, Omar Minaya and Amado Dinzi of the Texas Rangers signed him for $3,500. Sosa made his official pro debut in 1986 at the age of 17 with the Gulf League Rangers in Sarasota, Florida. Sosa was a lean 165 pounds whose main attribute was speed rather than power. In 61 games, he hit 275 with 4 home runs and 11 stolen bases. The following year, he moved up to Class A Gastonia, North Carolina. Sosa hit 279 with 11 home runs and 59 RBIs and was ranked number one in the Rangers' farm system. During that time, Sosa learned English primarily by hanging with his American teammates. His next stop was Charlotte in the High A Florida State League. At 19, Sammy was one of the youngest players. He hit only 229 and struck out 106 times, yet he stole 42 bases and drove in 51 runs. Sosa was sent to Tulsa in the AA Texas League to start the season. By June, Sammy was hitting 297 with 7 home runs and made the All-Star team. Pete Incavilla was placed on the disabled list with a sore neck, and so Sammy got the call every minor league wanted to hear when he was going to the show. Number 8. Early Struggles in the Majors an excited 20-year-old Sosa flew first class to New York, and on June 16, 1989, he hit leadoff in Yankee Stadium, where he singled against Andy Hawkins in his first major league at bat. In the sixth inning, he doubled off Hawkins and scored his first run. The next stop for the Rangers led to Sosa hitting his first homer with Roger Clemens on the mound. Thereafter, Sosa started seeing more breaking balls, and his average plummeted down to 238. The Rangers sent him to AAA Oklahoma City, where he moped a bit and wasn't hitting. However, Larry Himes, the general manager of the White Sox, saw something he liked and traded for the prospect. Sammy was sent to AAA Vancouver, where he hit 367 in 13 games. The White Sox called him up, and he joined the team in Minnesota. In his White Sox debut, Sosa walked twice and went 3 for 3 with a two run homer as Chicago won 10 to 2. In 33 games, he hit 273 with an OPS of 765. First thing he did when he returned home was to buy a house for his mother. Man, that's touching. After an indifferent 1990 season, Sosa slumped big time in 1991 and was traded before the start of the 1992 season to the Crosstown Chicago Cubs for outfielder George Bell. On his way out, Sosa told his White Sox teammates, Okay boys, I'm out of here. You guys will see me again. I'm going to be the best player in the game. Yes, he was determined to live up to those words. Number 7. Breakout Star Sosa played 67 games with only 262 at-bats in his first year with the Cubs, batting 260 with 8 home runs, 25 RBI, and 15 stolen bases in limited time. Although not outstanding numbers, it showed that he had improved, and he was still only 23 years old. The following year was the young Dominican's breakout season. He belted 33 homers with 93 runs batting in, crossing the plate 92 times, stealing 38 bases, and in the process, became the Cubs' first 30-30 player in franchise history. The next four seasons, from 1994 to 1997, were incredibly consistent for Slam and Sammy. As he averaged 133 games played, 80 runs, 102 RBI, 
144 hits, and 34 home runs per season. Sosa even made his first All-Star appearance in 1995. However, those numbers and achievements paled in comparison to what was still to come. Number 6. Long Gone Summer of 1998 Most baseball experts say that baseball was saved in 1998 by Sosa and St. Louis Cardinals first baseman Mark McGuire as they both were involved in the chase for Roger Maris's 1961 single season home run record of 61. Ironically, Sosa started the 1998 season slowly. By May 22nd, he had only 8 home runs. In June, Sosa made history with 20 home runs, breaking Rudy York's 1937 Major League record of 18 in one month. At month's end, the gap between McGuire was down to 4 and the national media began to notice. On July 27th at Phoenix, he hit the first Grand Slam of his career, driving in all the Cubs' runs with two homers and a 6-2 win. It became a daily fascination of fans if both players could break the record. The two achieved the feat with McGuire smashing 70 home runs and Sosa hitting 66. Sammy won the MVP award because the Cubs made the playoffs. Sosa and McGuire were selected co-sportsman of the year by Sports Illustrated. The Cubs had a day for Sosa in September and gave him a purple Plymouth Prowler. Number 5. Fun Fact Home Run Derby Sammy Sosa left fans in awe of his immense power. One performance that will long live be remembered is his performance at the 2002 Home Run Derby at Miller Park. The man hit five home runs over 500 feet. Yes, five. One even went 520 feet. The man hit the ball to some impossible places in that stadium. Every time the ball sounded off his bat, an immediate shock and gasp gripped the stadium and he got a standing ovation in a stadium full of a rival fan base. That was unreal, right? Number four the superstar years and endorsements. The offseason brought more recognition and honors. President Lionel Fernandez of the Dominican Republic made Sammy an ambassador. When a hurricane hit his country, Sosa sparked humanitarian aid with money, publicity, and personally distributed food, water, and medicine. At the State of the Union address, President Clinton introduced him and acknowledged his accomplishments. Sosa signed multi-million dollar endorsement deals with PepsiCo, Montgomery Ward, Latin American Telco Tricom, and around a dozen other companies. Sam and Slammy's Frosted Flakes became an item to be consumed after it hit the shelves. Sammy made cameo appearances in two movies in 2001, Hardball and On the Line. In 1997, he appeared in Kissing a Fool. Yes, Sosa was a king. In the 1999 season, Sosa hit 63 home runs, and in 2001, he hit 64 home runs, becoming the first player to hit 60 or more home runs three times in his respective career. From 1993 to 2003, Sammy Sosa had the greatest 10-year span of any Cubs player in history. It includes six more NL All-Star selections, six Silver Slugger awards, a Hank Aaron award, a Babe Ruth Home Run award, and an MLB Player's Choice NL Outstanding Player award. Sadly, the decline in controversies were on their way. Number 3. The Decline and the Retirement Two incidents that year may have contributed to Sosa's decline. On April 20th, 2003, he was hit in the head by a Solomon Torres fastball that smashed his helmet. Did Sammy Sosa sustain a concussion? Did that pitch irrevocably change his hitting ability? The idea has floated around Cubs fans for a decade now, and the belief has grown more recently with our understanding of head injuries. Sosa hit only one home run in his next 98 plate appearances. He never was the same player after that season. Then on June 3rd, his bat broke on a swing against the Tampa Bay Rays. Home plate umpire Tim McClellan found cork in the center of his shattered club. Sosa was kicked out of the game and eventually suspended for seven games. Sammy claimed it was a batting practice bat that he accidentally picked up. Sosa's other 76 bats were x-rayed with no evidence of cork, but his credibility took a major hit. Another controversy was that late in 2004, Sosa requested to sit out the last game at home against the Braves. He left the game early and it was the last straw for the Cubs. Sosa later played for the Baltimore Orioles and returned to where it started with the Texas Rangers in 2007. Whether it was the bats, concussion, age, or the issue at number two that led to Sammy's decline is debated to this day. Number two, PEDs and the Hall of Fame. On June 16, 2009, the New York Times reported that Sosa was on a list of players who had tested positive for performance enhancing drugs in 2003, the baseball steroid scandal. The paper stated that this information was obtained from unnamed attorneys who knew about Major League Baseball's drug test results from 2003. Previously, Sosa sat alongside Rafael Palmero, Jose Canseco, and Mark Aguirre at a 2005 hearing before Congress. 
His attorney testified on his behalf, stating, To be clear, I have never taken illegal performance enhancing drugs. I have never injected myself or had anyone inject me with anything. I have not broken the laws of the United States or the laws of the Dominican Republic. I have been tested as recently as 2004, and I am clean. Sosa became eligible for the National Baseball Hall of Fame, for which he became eligible in 2013, and he received 12.5% of the votes. Sosa failed in his final attempt to get enshrined in Cooperstown when he received only 18.5% of the needed 75% votes. A disappointment, despite the absurd numbers. Number 1. What is he doing now? Sammy Sosa is estimated to be worth $70 million, although he earned nearly $124 million in his playing career. He has diversified his global earnings by investing in oil in his home country of the Dominican Republic, storm-proof housing in Panama, beverages and hospitality in the UK, and real estate in the United Arab Emirates. Sammy shares six children with his wife, Sonia Rodriguez. The pair wed in 1992, and he reportedly enjoys a life of extreme luxury in the United Arab Emirates. Sosa has refuted speculation claiming that he desires to work for his former team, the Chicago Cubs. Social media went ablaze with memes ridiculing Sosa's light complexion due to the use of bleaching cream. Perhaps unfairly, the name Sammy Sosa will ever remain tainted by allegations of doping. A man who was poor rose to fame in the land of free and brave, only to fall out of grace in the public's eye. Yes, Sammy Sosa lived a wild, unbelievable life. What do you think about Sammy Sosa's wild life? Did he deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? Let me know in the comments section. Smash the like button and subscribe for more premium content. Until next time.